Good evening, everyone. The National Park Service would like to welcome you to this virtual civic engagement meeting for the Yellowstone National Park North Entrance Road Project. Thank you for being here tonight. I'm Nicole Denherter with ERO Resources and I will be moderating the meeting. Um, I'd like to go over some instructions for the webinar. First, we ask that you remain muted during the presentation and Q&A session. The chat room will be available for the duration of the presentation and at the end of the presentation. To submit a comment or question during the presentation, please type and submit to Emily Corsi in the chat box on your screen. Second, during the webinar, we will be posting messages to participants, such as a Zoom webinar tutorial and troubleshooting, Q&A how to, how to submit comments on the project, and a link to the project website. You can also send your comments about Zoom in the chat box to Lily Peralt. And lastly, captions can be activated during the presentation. You refer to the chat box or send a message to Lily Peralt for assistance with the captions. Now I'm going to turn it over to the Yellowstone National Park Superintendent, Cam Sholley, for tonight's presentation. Thanks, Nicole, and thanks to uh, all of you for joining us uh, tonight. If you try to get on on Tuesday, we apologize. We exceeded our cap from from Zoom, so we have a considerable uh, number, a, a higher number tonight that uh, should be a, allow everybody to get in and, and watch this. We've also <clears throat> decided to schedule two more of these, um, and we'll get the dates out to, to everyone. If uh, knowing that everybody's got different schedules, we're trying to make sure that we've got them at different times of the day and spread them out so everybody has an opportunity to, to call in. They're also gonna be recorded um, some of you may have seen that we we put uh, Tuesday's presentation already on YouTube. So try to make sure that everybody uh, has the opportunity to to see what we're thinking. And <clears throat> whether you're in Bozeman or New York, um, you know you're calling in because you care about uh, what's going on here in, in this particular project. Um, most of you know, you know we went through a, a very major flood event uh, on June 13th of 2022. Uh, you've got a team on here from the National Park Service and the Federal Highway Administration uh, that have all worked together <clears throat> from from really the day the flood happened and getting uh, these roads reconnected and repairs done very quickly in the summer of 2022. And then we've worked together to, uh, you know, take our time and think about what the future needs to hold for some of the permanent long-term repairs in these corridors. And I think, you know, everybody understands some of those challenges uh, and, and we wanna make sure that the, you know, these anything we do in this park uh, can have long-term consequences, especially if we get it wrong. And so, you know, the emergency is over obviously, and, you know, we're, we're taking our time to really kind of methodically go, go through and develop the right alternatives with your feedback. And then we'll land on a decision um, and we'll go over some of the timelines, but later this year, early next year, uh, as far as what the long-term, um, you know, permanent road's going to look like. Uh, so you'll have a plenty of opportunities. And at the end, Nicole explained kind of how you can submit comments and that kind of thing. Um, but I really, the first step is obviously you be here and kind of looking at what we're thinking. And then another big part of that is um, 
providing your honest feedback on which one you think uh, is the best way, is the best for, for the future. There isn't a perfect alternative. Um, I think the, uh, you know, after the flood happened, you know, in the, in the fall of 2022, I asked for every constructible possible road alignment to be looked at uh, from here to Gardner. And, um, you know, we had a considerable number of, and everybody knows here where Yellowstone is, northwest corner of Wyoming. Um, you know, 96% of the park is in Wyoming, about 3% in Montana, 1% in Idaho. Um, this is a map of the park. Uh, tonight, we're going to be talking about the north entrance road. So, you know, the, the section here, this roughly five mile section between uh, Mammoth Hot Springs and Gardner. Uh, we'll have a separate process for some of the things that we're planning uh, over the long term in the Northeast Corridor. So that'll be something different to, than tonight. But I asked for for basically every possible place we could build a road. And um, not that we would, but where could you if you wanted to? And we came up with a roughly six six different options. Uh, over the last year, for a variety of reasons and through a different a couple different processes, we've eliminated three of those six. And most of the reasons why we eliminated them was either significant impacts to habitat for wildlife, um, visual impacts, um, engineering. engineering issues, um, any number of different things. But the three you'll see here in a minute are the three that are under serious consideration. And there's pros and cons as we'll go over to, to all three. Um, you know, for those of you that have either been here, paid attention, uh, we were fortunate after the flood when the engineers told us the Canyon Road uh, would not be repaired quickly. We were fortunate to have the old Gardner Road, which was an 1879 stagecoach road available uh, to us to, to look at as an option for. Uh, a, you know, a temporary road, at least from here to uh, Gardner. Um, Federal Highways and the contractors and, and the Park Service team uh, did an incredible job getting that road constructed in four months. You'll see a little video here in a second. Um, the issue with that, because a lot of people ask the question, why not just use the road that you built in 2022? Um, you know, normally it takes two to three years to um, plan out a road and uh, make sure the engineering's right and that kind of thing. This one was done in four months. It's a safe road. Uh, it's doing the job right now, uh, but it, it is not in its current condition going to be able to be the permanent long-term road. So um, we're looking at the, uh, the three options you'll see here in a second, including improving the old Gardner Road to modern day standards, but there's there's some you know, upsides and downsides of, of each alternative. And I wish there was an alternative that was perfect. Uh, there's not. Um, the good news is we do have money uh, through flood recovery money uh, through appropriated through Congress and the administration to uh, execute this alternative whenever we decide we're ready. Um, but once again, we want to make sure we take our time and get it right. Um, some of the things that we consider as we've gone through and looked at some of these alternatives, and we'll talk more about some of these in detail, you know, obviously what are the impacts to the resources of this park? Um, natural, cultural, geologic, you know, this is a, a pretty heavy uh, wildlife corridor um, from a migration perspective, whether you're talking elk or bison or bighorns, um, you name it, we wanna be cognizant of that. Um, we've got threatened and endangered species considerations that we'll look at important that we pay attention to visitor experience and what the visitors are uh, wanting and what provides a, a good experience coming in the north entrance. The north entrance of the five in the park is the second busiest uh, with, you know, at peak, you know, 3,000 cars per day entering the park from Gardner. So, you know, it's, it's, it's important. Uh, it's, it's, it's a major entrance for, for people coming in from Montana. Uh, and we want to make sure that uh, just like we do everywhere, we take into consideration uh, what that visitor experience is going to look like. Engineering considerations are really important. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about some sliding soils, some of the soil 
uh, in this area is pretty unstable. And so, you know, we've been over the last year or so uh, boring uh, to check the soil conditions and what the slide is. That sliding soil is kind of a glacial slide that's occurring from the west toward the east. And um, any any alternative that we we pick, we're going to need to know exactly where that soil is sliding, how much it's sliding, and then make sure that we've got the right engineering solutions uh, to build a road that can withstand uh, some of those unstable soils. You'll hear from Nate uh, Jones from Federal Highways here. Um, you know they've got some good techniques to 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 work around that, but it's something that we want to be fully aware of before we go in and and uh, and look at building uh, anywhere for that matter. The visual impacts are are really big. I think um, you know there was there was uh, one of the alternatives we dismissed was on. So if you were coming from Mammoth down to Gardner, <clears throat> um, it was on the east side of the Gardner River. If you've been on that road, it's kind of above where the Bighorn sheep hang out on the cliffs above the the Canyon Road. Uh, we looked at building a, a you know a, a road potentially there, but Aside from the habitat impacts, I mentioned the 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 visual um, of that road doing switchbacks down the the side of the hill would have been, I think, horrendous for people coming into the park and for people in Gardner and that kind of thing. So, you know, the visual impacts and uh, you know where we where we put these roads are very 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 important. You know, I know everybody thinks this was a a one in five hundred year flood event. Um, I think it's very likely that'll happen sooner than 500 years. So anything we build has got to be resilient to not only floods, but could be any number of other things. Could it be earthquakes? Could it be you know, rock slides? Uh, those types of things. So the other major thing we're factoring in, in in this analysis of these alternatives is you know resiliency to something happening in the future. I think the last thing we'd want to do is spend two or three hundred million dollars on a road and have it. Um, you know, imploded from a, a, a rock slide or, or have another flood event come through and wipe it out again. So that's that's a very big uh, part of that. And then costs, you know, are, are, are something that we always consider. Uh, this will be expensive no matter which alternative that we pick. Certain alternatives will probably be more expensive than others. Um, you know, that is a factor that we'll, we'll look at also as we move forward. Got a couple quick videos here. I'll just give for those of you who want some background or a refresh. On the morning of June 13th, 2022, Yellowstone National Park and surrounding areas experienced a 500-year flood event. The flood destroyed several sections of the north entrance road within the park between Mammoth Hot Springs, Wyoming, and Gardner, Montana. Federal Highway Administration and National Park Service teams immediately began assessing the damage and making a plan to restore access. The old Gardner Road, now the current North Entrance Road, was identified as a temporary solution, but it required major improvements before it could be open to the public. Constructed in 1879, the Old Gardner Road was the original entrance road to Yellowstone until it was replaced in 1884. This temporary solution opened to the public on October 30th, 2022, only four months after the flood. The canyon alignment would follow the previous pre-flood north entrance road alignment and include several bridges through the Gardner River Canyon. Bridges would be constructed for river crossings, rockfall protection, and landslide protection. The proposed roadway would widen the pre-flood entrance road from a 22-foot width to the park standard 30-foot width. So this 
this is these are the three alignments. I think I actually fast forwarded past a slide. It doesn't matter. Um, on the left side of the screen, and let me let me just make sure. I think I um, went too fast. The canyon, the temporary north entrance road, would be widened from the existing 22 foot width to the park standard 30 foot width. Existing retaining and draining structures would also be replaced or enlarged to fit the wider road. The current steepness and tight curves would be modified to improve safety and drivability. For a better connection to the north entrance station, the roadway would be realigned on the approach into Gardner, Montana. The center road alignment would follow the pre-flood north entrance road for two miles north from Mammoth, Wyoming where a proposed bridge would provide a high crossing of the Gardner River. The road would travel northwest to pass west of Slide Lake, aligning with the current north entrance road for a short segment. The road would then veer northeast towards the pre-flood north entrance road on the approach into the north entrance station in Gardner, Montana. The proposed roadway would widen to include the park standard 30-foot width. Okay, so these are the three. So here's Mammoth Hot Springs down here for your, I think most of you are familiar. Gardner, Montana is roughly five miles north. Uh, the, the, the road, the north entrance road prior to the flood um, followed this purple line and then into the red line. So that's, that's back through the Gardner River Canyon. Uh, the old Gardner Road is the blue. So that's the road that we're currently using that we built up in 2022. And then this center alignment we're calling is this purple that, you know, one thing I didn't mention was, you know, we've, we've got two miles of road roughly from here in Mammoth down to Boiling River um, that was not impacted by the flood. Uh, and then we've also obviously built this road that in, in, in building out the old Gardner Road. So one of the things that we've, we've looked at has been, you know, is there a way to, to take advantage of either infrastructure that wasn't impacted by the flood uh, and or take advantage of the old Gardner Road uh, that we, you know, obviously did considerable amount of work on. And so those are those are the things that we're we're focused on. So these are the three. Um, you know, let's go with the canyon first. You know, I think the the biggest number of, of comments that I've gotten in, in the last 18 months uh, has been not to go back through the canyon and to restore the canyon back to its natural state. Um, you know, we are going to evaluate whether that's a good idea or not, but I've, I've heard from many of you very loud and clear that a lot of you don't think, I mean, there are people that think it's a great idea to go back through the canyon, but the, the, the larger number have been to stay out of the River Canyon. Um, I think that, you know, the, the, initial, the initial thoughts on that are, we, you know, we, we thought about putting a, a raised uh, viaduct slash kind of bridge structure that would snake through the river or through the canyon. Um, that's been modified to you know, looking at two or three or or more bridge, different bridge sections through the canyon, uh, protecting the new road from rockfall with, you know, a, a structure over certain segments of the road, and um, you know, I think that this is probably close to the, the the more expensive of the three. We haven't priced them all out yet, exactly, uh, but you know. This is something that we're going to evaluate whether it makes sense for us to to move through. The old Gardner Road. I'll we'll go back over here to the blue. Um, for those of you that have traveled on it, you know they did a great job in four months. But it's super steep. Uh, you know it's ten percent grade. I think in a couple areas it's more than ten percent. Uh, it's pretty narrow, and there are a significant number of. Uh, very tight curves, which do present problems for uh, vehicles with trailers, you know, buses, oversized vehicles, and those types of things. I do, once again, just uh, commend Federal Highways for, you know, doing what they did in the four months. I think we're all grateful to have a road. Uh, there's no question, but I think we all acknowledge that because it was built so quickly, 
Um, there are things about it that would need to be changed. So if we went with the old Gardner Road, um, you know, looking at trying to modify that to modern standards, take out some of the grades or, or reduce the grades of some of the hills, uh, take out some of the sharp turns, um, there'd be a, quite a bit of additional engineering and you know culverts and things like that that would need to be replaced and or even some small bridge structures in certain areas of this alignment and i think that the big thing or one of the major things is that you know this would be call it three years plus of construction which would be three years plus of 30 minute delays um of night closures potentially and um, that would be a fairly significant disruption to, uh, you know, the 3,000 cars a day that are coming in uh, from Gardner, um, you know, at peak in the summer. So, you know, we'll we'll look at this. You know, it, it may be it may prove to be the best alternative. I'm not sure, uh, but that it, it of the three, it does come with probably the most challenges from a logistics standpoint. You know, for those of you that uh, are, are familiar, you know, we try to spread these projects around the park. We've got a lot, we've got hundreds of millions of dollars worth of infrastructure projects, um, either just tap, just finished happening or in the queue. It's important that there's a lot of work to be done. You all know uh, the park won't fix itself from an infrastructure standpoint, but we try to spread those projects around to minimize uh, disruptions to to the visitors. You know, when we did the Dunraven uh, Pass project, we actually closed that pro that road, the segment for for two years, so we could get it done faster. Because if we hadn't, it probably would have taken five years under you know one way traffic and and that kind of thing. So <clears throat> that was an option there. Obviously, if we picked the old Gardner Road, that wouldn't be an option. So we'd be, you know. Anytime a contractor has to work under those types of conditions with with live traffic, it, it prolongs the the length of the project, and that's something that we need to consider. This center alignment here, the purple, I think, um, you know, I, I, it's a, kind of a hybrid of the two. It does take advantage of the two miles down to Boiling River. And there's a bridge structure that would be fairly sizable if you're familiar with this, I think most of you are, uh, that would cross the river kind of at a quasi 45 degree angle, um, keeping it out of the canyon. And then uh, it would kind of snake along here. There'd be potentially some sections we could connect and use of the old Gardner Road. Um, this area right here, you know, overall is pretty invisible from Gardner. Uh, so from a visual standpoint, it's it's good. It is probably the most um, significant concern relative to the sliding soil issue I mentioned earlier. Uh, there's also some, you know, archaeological sites and some things like that that we would need to uh, really look at closely and work around. But, you know, this would be um, kind of a, a split between between the, the other two. Um, so we haven't chosen a preferred alternative. Uh, you know, we're going to do some Q and A here in a second. We'd love to hear your your viewpoints on it. And then, like I said, we've got a bunch of experts on here that can answer any uh, uh, any specific questions that you have on on anything. Um, let's see. So last year, you know, I mentioned this a little bit, but we I think we did nine uh, different kind of little boring holes in, in, in different areas to measure the, the soil sliding. I think we're doing 14 this year. Some of the questions around how come we're not moving faster on this is we've got to get that work done. As I stressed earlier, it's, it's very important. There are other uh, surveys that we always do with any type of, of project. And so you see a couple of them here that we'll, uh, we'll also be working on. So kind of next steps, uh, we had the meeting on, the, on Tuesday. We have this meeting tonight with you all. Uh, we're gonna be consulting with tribes. Uh, we're gonna begin to develop a, an environmental assessment and identify a preferred alternative that will be based on everything that I've talked about in the last 15 minutes and uh, include you know, a lot of the feedback that we're hearing from 
from our partners and stakeholders. Uh, we plan on uh, releasing an environmental assessment for public review, a draft uh, in September uh, this year, and, uh, and issue a FONSI or a decision document in early 25. Uh, by that point, we should have the data that we need uh, from the soils and things like that to make more of an informed decision. Um, so with that, uh, Nicole, I'll hand it back to you. We can just we can do some Q and A for for anyone that's got questions. All right, great, thank you, Cam. Uh, so as Cam mentioned, we're going to transition to the Q and A session now for this presentation. So the park does invite you to ask your questions now. Um, to submit a comment or question, I mentioned this earlier, please type and submit it to Emily Corsi in the chat box on your screen. And if you do need technical assistance, assistance using Zoom, you can chat Lily Peralt. We do have uh, two questions so far. So the first one, this is going to be for you, Cam. Uh, would the Purple Central route offer an opportunity for a turnout overlook to the Gardner Canyon? You know, Bob, why don't you jump in? I don't, or I don't know if Dan is on or Nancy. I, I, I don't, or Nate even. I don't think the purple route here gets us to, so, uh, these guys can talk more about it. They're, they're a lot smarter than I am. Um, because of the soils and that kind of thing, it was important for us to kind of split through the middle here. And, you know, the closer you get to this canyon, if, especially with that soil shift, uh, I think the more danger that road foundation could be in, in the future. So I think we did, for the most part, keep it away. But Bob, is there a section up here at all that you could look into the canyon or what's what's the, I can't remember what that looks like at the end there. Hey, Cam. Yeah, I, I think uh, I could just pinpoint a spot at the moment, but I think the team is going to look for all those opportunities to find viewing locations where we can look down into the canyon, um, look up river, down river, um, vista views. Um, I think with all these, or specific to that alignment, yes, I think we would try and find an opportunity to, to view up and down through the canyon. Um, the bridge itself may, may provide some really nice views um, to the north and, and down through the canyon. Um, and then as we progress towards Gardner, there may be some opportunity for, for some other turnouts. Um, I think all three of these alternatives, if as we learn and more study them more and look for those kind of opportunities to provide interpretive pullouts, viewing turnouts, wildlife opportunities, we're gonna we're gonna explore all of that the best we can to try and maximize the visitor experience for any any of these three corridors. Thanks, Bob. Uh, and Bob's the chief of our professional services group. So he has a lot of the engineers and project managers and landscape architects under, under him. So thanks for that, Bob. Date, did you want to add anything to that? Federal Highways? Hey, Cam. I'm uh, Nathan Jones, uh, project manager with Federal Highway. Uh, yeah, I echo what Bob said. There may be some viewing opportunity. Uh, right as you're coming across Slide Lake and the map that Cam has up there. Um, as far as trying to get the view shed for the length of the alignment north of Slide Lake, um, those are all active landslide areas. So the goal there is to try to keep the roadway away from the tow, away from the river's edge on those landslides. So viewing opportunity is a little bit more limited further to the north, but there may be some opportunities, some view sheds as you get toward that Slide Lake and heading down south toward the old North Entrance Road. Thanks, Nate. All right, thank you both. Uh, Nate, the next question is for you as well. <clears throat> Will the two mile section between Mammoth and the Boiling River be widened and have guardrails added on the steep curving sections? Yeah, good question. So if that ends up being part of the preferred alternative, uh, that segment of road would be brought up to the current park standard. Uh, which the videos showed that's to widen the road from approximately 22 foot is the existing condition to a 30 foot wide road. Uh, the profile grade and some steeper segments through that uh, portion is about 9%. We try to bring that profile grade down. 
Uh, that could introduce some more curvature just to lengthen that alignment. Um, yeah, there are some areas within that segment that are next to steeper slopes would require some guardrail. But yeah, the intent there would be to reduce the profile grade and uh, widen the roadway section. All right, thank you, Nate. The next question is for Bob Camel. Any plans to have a trail accessing the canyon area? Yeah, um, and I don't know if, if the end of that question, if that person's familiar with the park, we do have one very popular existing trail at the uh, kind of at the north end of the canyon alignment. It's called the Rescue Creek Trail. We lost access to that due to the flood, uh, the bridge that that uh, crossed over the river was washed away. Um, we do intend to replace that bridge with a, little, a much more robust uh, structure. Um, and so any, under any three of these alternatives, uh, access to the Rescue Creek Trailhead and the Rescue Creek Trail will be maintained. Um, I think as far as other trails within the canyon, um, probably the best opportunity for that is if, uh, if the canyon alternative isn't selected, then there'll be some infrastructure in that corridor um, that we may be able to leave in place um, as some short uh, trails within the corridor, within the canyon experience, um, and maybe some opportunities for some short uh, ABA accessible trails. Um, I, I think we're gonna be looking at that a lot as we go forward um, and, and see what opportunities are there. Um, again, if if we don't, if the canyon alternative uh, isn't selected, um, there may be some opportunity in there with some existing infrastructure. Um, but I'd uh, love to hear any thoughts uh, you might have um, as well as to maybe what you're thinking might be a, 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 a good canyon experience or trail experience. All right, thanks, Bob. Uh, the next question is for Nate Jones. Um, it's, it's a little bit longer. If the center alignment option or the canyon option were selected, would the grade and curves be brought up to modern standards? When heading north, immediately after the Mammoth Campground, the initial plunge downwards was fairly steep and sometimes, quote, fun in the snow, and led directly to a series of fairly tight turns. The added width would help, but is there anything that could be done to minimize the grade and or sharpness of those blind turns? Yeah, great question. Uh, that hits to the point that Cam discussed during the presentation. So the uh, current North Entrance Road, Old Gardner Road, uh, would be reconstructed, realigned to current standards. So it'd be brought up to the 30-foot park road width uh, for the length of the alignment. Uh, as far as the geometry and profile grade, uh, we would fit an Ashto geometry to that road. So we would have 25, 35 mile an hour curves. Uh, for the length of it, that would be a vast improvement over the existing condition. Uh, the hairpin curve um, is very tight. There's a couple real tight curves. There's some steep profile grades on that road, 10% plus, a couple segments, I think we have 12%. Uh, we'd be targeting more around the 8% grade and no tighter than a 25 mile an hour curve. All right, thanks, Nate. The next question is for Bob. What would happen to the old Gardner Road if one of the other two options was used? He might have said it, but if so, then I missed it. Oh, sorry. Uh, that's a great question. I think it's one of the more exciting questions around these alternatives. And uh, you know, if, if the old Gardner Road was not selected, we obviously have quite a bit of infrastructure there that's in place. And um, you know, there's a lot of opportunities around that. And I, I think we're all collectively brainstorming those. And some of those might include uh, conversion of that uh, corridor, that road to a, to a trail network or a multi-use path. Um, it may remain at some level of, of uh, administrative functionality and use. Um, maybe it returns to a seasonal use for, for park visitors, much like it had been in the past. Um, Maybe it's part of a redundancy circulation pattern. Um, I think we're, we're, we're looking at all those kind of ideas and concepts around that. We recognize that if it isn't selected, that um, 
there's there's infrastructure there that would and will remain in place that could benefit the park and the visitors in a number of ways. I don't know. Nate, do you wanna do you wanna speak or add to to that thinking? Hey Bob, sorry, I was reading ahead. Where were you <laughs> leading on that one? I, I think we're good. I think I think I think Bob answered most of that. <clears throat> it's probably the second biggest question is are we gonna if we don't pick the old Gardner Road, will we turn it back into the condition that it was in before? And yeah, you know, I don't know what the price tag to do that would be, but it'd probably be over $15 million to undo what we did in uh 2022. So, you know, if we get to when we get to that point, we'll have more conversations. And once again, you're gonna have plenty of opportunities to think about this and present some ideas but just to reiterate what bob said you know it could be a bike path type thing could be a service road it could be uh you know one of the ideas was to make it you know improve it a little bit and say we we picked one of the other two alignments you know if you've been to yosemite valley for instance uh you know it's there's a, a road on the north side of the valley that's two lanes one way in and there's on the south side it's two lanes one way out type of thing um and so, you know, is it is it is it beneficial since we do have that constructed to have some redundancy? Uh, and and like I said earlier, you know, we were really lucky we had the old Gardner Road to turn to. It would have been a, a much longer period of time of ha of having the, the community disconnected from the park. So um, those are a couple things we're thinking about. But uh, if you've got other ideas, we'd love to hear them. All right, thank you. Next question that we have is for you, Cam. As a Cook City resident, I'd like to thank you all for the amazing work keeping our thoroughfare open. For the majority of the folks not wanting the canyon, what reasons do they cite? That was an amazing and beautiful drive and I would love to see the Bighorn again. You know, I, I think um, it's a good question. I, there's a lot of people that are attached to the canyon. So by no means did I mean to imply that no one wants the canyon. I think when you look at um, the amount of work that would have to occur in the river uh, for several miles to construct, you know, the bridges and and rebuild the road. Uh, when you look at the very uh, high likelihood of the continued rock falls that many of us have seen within that corridor on the old road. Uh, the, the additional engineering, you know, they're talking about putting a, you know, a, a, a basically a roof over the road in in many sections or certain sections that are are prone to to rock fall. I think there's, you know, just some concerns around that. There's probably some concerns around the cost of having, you know, multiple large bridge structures snaking through the canyon. Um, there's a question about uh, the Bighorn Sheep being able to come down. Uh, like they like they do and be previously be able to cross the road and now they'd be coming down and on the roof of the road, so to speak. So, I, you know, I think it's 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 uh, it's got pros and cons. And um, those are all things that we'll look at and consider. And Nate, I don't know if, if you want to add anything to that at all. On some of the rock fall uh, analyses that you did. Yeah, as far as through the canyon, we've been looking under the lens of resilience. So as Cam mentioned, there was about a 500 year event, flood event that wiped through the canyon. It was a rain on snow cascading event. Um, the permanent infrastructure, if that ends up being the uh, preferred alternative, uh, we'd be analyzing that alternative uh, against a resilience analysis. So our criteria would be if we had a similar event to what happened in June of 2022, uh, we'd be looking for our infrastructure to be able to be open to emergency vehicles within 24 hours of that 500 year event. So a pretty drastic change in infrastructure would be required versus the previous condition. Uh, similarly, if we had a smaller event, 100 year event, something that's a bit more frequent, we'd be looking to have infrastructure that could resist a 100 year event and allow two way traffic within two way traffic to be traversable within 24 hours. Yeah, the only thing else I'd add is, you know, you look at, I don't know what it, what 
what the cost estimate is. Nate, you, you have better numbers. You know, we're not far enough along to have this the highly detailed cost estimates, but you're looking at, you know, say three hundred million dollars in that range um, or more. And um, it freaks me out a little bit to think about spending that much money rebuilding to the canyon and then potentially having, you know, even though these engineers are fantastic, uh, you know, maybe it's a one in thousand year event next instead of a one in 500. And, you know, it happens in 10 years instead of a thousand years from now. And, you know, you end up getting uh, another big section washed out or something like that. So no one can predict the future. And um, those are just things that we want to make sure we think about moving forward. All right, thank you. Nate, the next question is for you as well. The purple route has a lot of curves on the map shown. Are these curves going to have less grades and sharp turns for, for large RV access over the OGR route? Uh, over the current temporary north entrance road, current north entrance road, uh, this would be a more favorable alignment. Uh, so like I said, we'll be fitting 25, 35 mile an hour astro geometry. Uh, we're targeting maximum of 8% grade, so it'll be a shallower, uh, more drivable road than what's there now. Um, compare our um, preferred design for current north entrance road, if it was the preferred, and the purple alignment, the center, uh, I'd say they'd be fairly similar. Uh, one distinction between the two is the blue alignment, the current north entrance road. Uh, that one climbs and it kind of stays on a high approach into Mammoth. The purple alignment would climb and then drop back down onto the old north entrance road. So there'd be a slight difference there I could call out in the visitor experience. But as far as roadway geometry, uh, the permanent condition of either would be uh, fairly similar. All right, thanks, Nate. Well, while we've got you, there's one more question for you. Is the design of the road two 15 foot travel lanes. Is there a paved or unpaved shoulder? So the road standard that we're using for typical section is a 30 foot paved top. And that consists of two 11 foot travel lanes with two four foot shoulders. So there would be uh, four foot paved shoulders in addition to the travel lane. All right, thank you, Nate. The next question is for Jennifer Carpenter. There has been a history of wolves wintering the Boiling River slash China Gardens. Has there been any evaluation of how the center option would impact the wildlife? Yes, hi, I'm Jennifer Carpenter. I'm the chief of the Yellowstone Center for Resources. And uh, preliminary analysis shows that the impacts on predators would be similar probably across all three alternatives uh, and, and not likely very different from the historic use that we've seen with the original road. Uh, so we're not expecting any significant differences. However, I will caveat that with, we haven't done our full blown analysis yet for wildlife uh, and we will be working on that once we have all the data in from all the surveys and uh, that will be in the environmental assessment. Thanks. Thanks, Jennifer. Bob Campbell, the next question is for you. How long would the purple op option take to complete? So right now we're, we're planning on a, a, at least a three year construction timeframe. Um, I think the three to five years is, is generally um, at this level of design and information that we know, uh, those are the, those are the time frames we're looking at, three to five. All right, thank you. The next question is for Nate again. I applaud trying to use the two miles of the canyon route to the Boiling River Bridge area. Could alternative three, the center alignment, be combined with the old Gardner Road alternative two, just west of or slightly northwest of Slide Lake? Um, I think that that's still open for consideration. Uh, we do have a short segment uh, once we're above Slide Lake where those two alignments do converge for a short distance. Uh, what we show right now is a little bit more um, curved alignment. That's to lengthen the alignment, help with the profile grade. Uh, there would be some benefit as far as you know, natural cultural resource impacts to try to align for a larger segment. 
Uh, purpose for going off alignment in that portion is just to try to get a more favorable profile grade. Uh, I'm not saying that it's probably not ruled out at this point. It's something that we'll consider to look at as their opportunity to reuse that existing roadway section. Uh, the purple alignment is just shown the way it is because it provides some more advantageous terrain for the roadway geometry. All right, thank you, Nate. Uh, the next question is for Bob. Could you quickly mention what the other three possible routes were? Sure, um, and just looking at the image that's on the screen, um, you see the uh, kind of the Gardner River corridor down the middle. And um, on the right-hand side, you may notice kind of a bench. Um, it's kind of just before the, the term Gardner, Montana, uh, there's a bench. Uh, yeah, Cam, if that, yeah, there you go. Or if you want to point the arrow on the over, over on the other image um, where McMinn Bench is, that's McMinn Bench. Um, that was an alternative right there. Yep, there was, uh, you'd be coming up from Gardner and on the back side of that bench uh, would require a, a number of switchbacks to climb to that elevation. And then to, uh, from that elevation, you would kind of traverse back down to to the uh, to the road, uh, and again, you need to cross the Gardner River one more time on a on a structure. So that that was the McMinn bench that was considered and eliminated. Um, and Cam spoke to that a little earlier. A lot of that was visual concerns, but mostly there's a lot of resource concerns uh, up there with a uh, number of species that uh, migrate, breed, uh, and that's critical habitat for for a number of of species. Another alternative that was considered and, and rejected was essentially, if you're familiar with the park, on the other side of that bluff, kind of where Cam, where that hand is, um, on the other side of, of, uh, of that ridge is Rescue Creek Trail. And uh, that, that kind of follows the backside of Mount Everest um, to Blacktail Plateau, um, where it connects back to the road that goes from Mammoth to Tower. Um, that, that road would have been in wilderness and uh, also would have been considerably longer and probably add, uh, you know, 20 minutes or more to, uh, to the commute for employees and, and residents of Mammoth. And uh, um, so it, uh, that was a second option. And there was kind of a group of, a third, th of, of the third group, and that's kind of where the hand is there. Um, it was above the OGR. Um, and uh, it would have come in above the OGR and it would, uh, the goal there was to try and just be a little higher and maybe find uh, some sweeter spots on some of these landslide complexes. But uh, the logistics around that and connecting that back to the entrance station and reconnecting it into the mammoth developed area were also kind of uh, uh, perplexing. Um, so those are, those are generally the three uh, alignments that were considered and dismissed. All right, thank you. Um, I know we touched on this one earlier, it might be worth reiterating. Once the option, oh, and I'm sorry, this is for Nate, and I would say also Bob could answer this because he answered this earlier. Once the option is chosen and approved, is there a range of time for completion for each project? Yeah, I can probably reiterate, reiterate what Bob had mentioned earlier. Um, we're thinking that it's probably in the realm of three to five years. We're still preliminary in this design, so we don't have a defined schedule yet. Uh, a couple variables that may impact construction uh, duration would be, you know, if we're on certain alternatives that need to be constructed under traffic, uh, Cam hit on during his presentation, that adds some considerable time uh, just to maintain traffic during construction. Um, adversely, if we're on alternatives that have um, more infrastructure, more bridges, more structures, uh, those take times to build. Uh, for instance, the canyon, some of the structures that would need to be built aren't even accessible in their current condition. So you'd have to account for time to build your way in and then get those structures built in the canyon. Uh, but yeah, generally, I think it was stated we're looking at probably a three to five year uh, construction duration. All right, uh, next question. Thank you, Nate. The next question is for Tom James. Could you elaborate on the archaeological sites under consideration for the middle route? Yeah, this is Tom James, and I'm the cultural resource specialist for the road program here in Yellowstone. And uh, 
This entire area was previously surveyed back in 1998 by the Museum of the Rockies. We went out and did a resurvey just to verify that their site locations were correct and everything. They didn't have GPS at the time, so we wanted to make sure that everything was where they had recorded it before. We had a few shifts, but not too much. But starting at Mammoth, going to Gardner, all the way up the Purple Line, we found 14 archaeological sites. Uh, that's within 100 feet, so a 200 foot wide buffer of that Purple Line. Um, most of these sites are very small uh, Native American ephemeral sites. They're not, you know, campgrounds or anything. It's a short term. We were there for a few days and then left or, or even less time. Uh, there's a couple of larger sites, but uh, that, that's what we have for the most part. 14 sites. Most of them are small ephemeral lithic scatters. We do have two historic period sites, uh, can dumps, that kind of thing. That's what we're talking about. And you also had not as many, but you had some on the other alternatives as well, right? That's correct. All three of these alternatives have archaeological sites along them. Um, uh, we had six along the OGR segment, four along the canyon segment, and uh, and then those fourteen in the in the in the purple line there. So, and there's a really good chance that. Uh, once we actually get an actual road alignment, like I said, that uh, that's within a hundred feet of the center line on either side. So once we get the actual road going, a lot of those will be missed um, and not impacted. All right, thank you. Next question is for Bob Camel. Will the eventual road also include the wastewater line to Gardner? The answer to that is possibly. Um, if if the canyon alternatives is selected, um, that is a that is that would uh, be a yes. Um, that's where the sewer line was. I don't. Maybe you might have noticed in some of Tam's presentation, some of the washout images. You may have seen some piping um, in the washouts. That was our sewer main that went to Gardner, um, and. Uh, if we are back in the canyon, it is a gravity flow um, from Mammoth down to Gardner. So that would be a very logical and uh, placement of, of that infrastructure. The other two alternatives are a little bit different. Uh, there's quite a bit of elevation difference in those two alternatives from Mammoth. And uh, there's also a lot of uh, dipsy doodles. And uh, as, as those two alignments um, progress from from south to north. So we, it would require additional infrastructure, lift stations, means of pumping uh, and, and conveyance to, uh, to deliver that wastewater to Gardner. Uh, we'd also need to provide power along that alignment to, uh, to run some of these lift stations. So we're looking at that. Um, and we're, we also have a separate team that's independent of, of, uh, of our work here with uh, with these three alignments, they're also independently seeing if if uh, there's another solution to the connection that may exist outside of uh, these three road corridors. All right, thank you, Bob. Next question is for Nate. Is the current temporary road above the landslide areas? Uh, short answer is no. The current road is actually within the landslide areas. Uh, part of the analysis I could expand on. Uh, Cam mentioned we have some geotechnical analysis that's going into you know any of these alternatives. Right now we're working on characterizing these landslides. Uh, we're installing instrumentation. Uh, we're looking at satellite imaging, doing INSAR analysis, trying to get a sense of which areas are the most um, quickly moving which areas seem to be more historic, um, less active, and trying to avoid the areas that are the most active and have shown the most recent movement. All right, thank you, Nate. The next question is for you, Cam. Are there plans to develop visitor center videos and displays to explain the impact of the flood? Um, there's not enough flood footage on social media for you. Uh, it's a good question. We haven't really 
we've got a lot of material about uh, on the flood, obviously. Um, I do I do think that's a good idea at some point to to kind of from a historical perspective, uh, you know, capture what happened and and figure out a way for either that to be on our website or accessible to to visitors, and especially as everybody knows, time goes by quickly and um nice for us to have that kind of in a, in a in a way that can keep it or at least explain it to to visitors in in future years but we don't have anything right this second but that's a that's a great idea all right thanks kim the next question is for nate thank you again for your work getting the ogr operational so quickly we observed that the pavement surface seemed very slick in winter weather are there any alternatives available to reduce the slipperiness um, for the permanent alignment, there's a couple things that will happen that'll help with some of the slipperiness and keeping vehicles on the road. Um, one is the road is steep and the road is narrow uh, and the road has tight curves. Uh, those three things combined kind of culminate in, yeah, having some vehicles at times dealing with slippery conditions and having a tough time staying on the road. Um, if you're looking, if the question was more around a short-term solution, um, my understanding was the road did get a surface course this year. Typically, that does improve the friction. Uh, if there gets to be a lot of ice buildup, uh, we tend to lose some. Uh, I'd say overall, the best advice for navigating the OGR road is, um, like it was mentioned, it wasn't built to current standards. The road just needs to be driven at an appropriate speed. Uh, so slow down, take the curves uh, slow, and uh, just pay attention to winter driving conditions. All right, thank you. Next question is for Jennifer Carpenter. Will any alternative keep high priority the dire problem we have with invasive weeds? The new road created a huge pathway for invasives from the Gardner Basin into the higher elevations of the park. Would like to know um, that is heavy on the minds of resource slash project managers with any alternative. Looks like you're muted, Jennifer. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I was saying that, um, thank you for that question. It is uh, obviously a very important uh, resource uh, issue for us here in Yellowstone. I wanted to note that the temporary road uh, was built in four months. It was built, at, uh, finished at the end of October. We did try to reseed uh, at that time. Unfortunately, it snowed literally the day after the road opened. So uh, the seeding wasn't as successful as we had hoped uh, for the temporary road. And we are continuing to work on reducing the presence of invasives along that stretch. Uh, that being said, uh, for all of these alternatives, um, mitigation of invasives uh, to reduce the risk uh, getting into the park further and aggressive restoration efforts are planned for any alternative that we would select. So please know that we are very aware of the uh, invasive issues, uh, both in that corridor and then coming into the park. And we uh, take very seriously um, combating uh, invasives coming into Yellowstone. Thanks. Thanks, Jennifer. The next question is for Bob Camel. Will the new project include new utilities like fiber optic and a replacement sewer line? Yes, one that's a very interesting question. Um, and one that heavily impacted the uh, some of the uh, work on the OGR. Um, the, the current fiber optic connection to the park runs uh, underneath the OGR. So there were a lot of places that um, you know, we, we had to be very sensitive in the rebuild and, and process on the OGR not to disturb the existing fiber optic. Um, so there is ex that it does exist and um, we would not want to lose that uh, service and that utility connection between Gardner and Mammoth. So um, we would absolutely either maintain or reestablish the fiber optic connection alignment dependent um, unless there's a newer technology that exists at the time of construction that, that we may not uh, may not need it. But, um, and then as far as the sewer connectivity, um, again, if, if we're in the canyon, it's, it's an easy resolution. Um, we have gravity flow. Uh, the other two alignments need a lot more study design and engineering around uh, uh, 
around that functionality and uh, infrastructure to, to pump and move um, you know, that, 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 uh, that product from Mammoth to Gardner. But it is the park's um, desire to return our wastewater flows to the Gardner Municipal Plant. All right, thank you, Bob. All right, the next question is for Tom James. What are the considerations for archeological sites and how would they be affected? Well, so ideally we'll avoid archeological sites. And uh, in the past, uh, our partners at the Federal Highways Administration have been very good and very sensitive with us. Uh, they'll take our maps of the archeological sites and, uh, and route the road around them if possible. If that's not possible, we'll work with the state historic preservation officers and our tribal partners to develop a mitigation plan, usually includes data recovery, excavations, and maybe some interpretation. That's generally how we go about it. Um, I can't speak to exactly what we'll do until we've had those consultations and decided on a memorandum of agreement with anything that we will impact. Thanks, Tom. All right, uh, we have one last question and this one is for Nate Jones. Could a loop of sorts be used, i.e. the south end of OGR from Slide Lake, one way with the Canyon Road to Boiling River Bridge being one way and then the center alignment road being built to Slide Lake area and converging with two lane road back to Gardner? Okay, I think I was trying to follow that uh, thinking on the map view there. Um, I guess generally we did consider doing some one lane uh, type routes that would, you know, have a separate inbound and outbound corridor. Uh, there's some pros and cons to that line of thinking. Uh, some of the pros would be that, you know, we could utilize more of the existing infrastructure. Maybe we don't have to widen the uh, existing current north entrance road uh, quite as wide as what we'd have to do with a two lane road. Uh, it would also provide a level of redundancy uh, having roadways and two separate corridors. Uh, some of the cons, reasons why we're not currently advancing that line of thinking, um, it's a lot of impacts to build a single lane road. Uh, if we can uh, culminate, converge, uh, get all of our impacts in a single corridor, uh, we can lessen the total amount of uh, natural, historic, cultural resources uh, impacts. Uh, you also just generally from a cost standpoint, you get a lot more bang for your buck uh, when you build the two lanes uh, in a single road corridor versus splitting them out and building those lengths for uh, separate corridors. Uh, so again, we did have that line of thinking at a time. Uh, currently, we're not advancing uh, that concept. All right, thank you, Nate. And that wraps up our, oh, I'm sorry, we do have one more question that came in. Will the foot, uh, let's see, this would be for Nate. Will the footbridge near Rescue Creek and Gardner River be replaced? It's at the base of Mount Everts. Yeah, the Rescue Creek Bridge got wiped out during the same flood event. Uh, that's in the process of design right now. Uh, so we're going through an exercise, uh, identifying the type size location for that replacement bridge. Uh, it'll be both for pedestrian and stock use in our current design. Um, right now we're working with uh, Federal Highway and Park Service trail crew, uh, some of the backcountry law enforcement on what that bridge needs to accommodate. Uh, next step will be to initiate a separate compliance process from um, the compliance that's underway for the roadway project. But yeah, our hope is to get that bridge designed, get it through compliance, and it's on the uh, front burner for getting that one to construction. Yeah, and just so everybody knows, no matter what alternatives selected, we will put that bridge back in. Uh, and so if we if we didn't choose the canyon option, we will figure out the right uh, modifications that need to be made to the turnout and that kind of thing for access from the entrance station. And that's also on a much faster time timeline. The bridge replacement is than the construction of any of the three alternatives for the road. All right, thank you both. Um, we do have a couple more. So the next one is for Bob Camel. If the Canyon Road is not chosen, will the existing road be removed to return the Canyon to its natural state? Yeah, there are, there will be some sections that 
we, we're going to restore, reclaim, so to speak. I think, uh, and then I think there's other sections where maybe either from the north end or from the south end where we have some short segments that maybe we explore those a little bit for, for some trail options or opportunities. Um, but I think there are some areas within the canyon that are going to lend themselves to reclamation and restoration. Um, and, and we're going to you know, kind of define what that looks like um, as we move forward. All right, thanks, Bob. I have uh, one more question for you. Will access to Boiling River be restored? Access to um, the Boiling River location um, under the, you know, under the, uh, if we're in the uh, canyon or the center alignment, um, there will be obviously road that goes close to or right next to the Boiling River um, area. Um, and we'll, we're gonna look at maybe how we uh, provide some opportunity there. Um, but the Boiling River itself as a, as kind of a bathing and uh, opportunity uh, is, is no longer exists. Um, the, the flood, um, change the course of the river through that location. And, uh, and, and uh, so that, that piece of the Boiling River experience um, will not be coming back. And I don't know, Cam, do you want to speak to that at all? No, I think you did that well. All right, thank you. A uh, couple more questions. When will be, we be able to reopen the campground? I assume they're Meaning Mammoth Campground? That's for you, Cam. It'll, yeah, it'll reopen this year. And <clears throat> the main reason it didn't open last year was the, the wastewater from the campground restrooms obviously was part of the flow down the canyon. So that was disrupted as we built this, this new temporary wastewater system here in Mammoth. Uh, the teams have done a really good job of getting those lines connected to the new system. So we'll have that online this this year. All right, thank you. One last question for you, Cam. If climate change is a top concern, why build a wider road that makes it easier for more cars to enter? Well, how many cars enter the park is a different is is much different than what the what the width of the road is. Um, so you could have a very narrow road and have the same number of cars. So those those two things probably shouldn't be conflated. <clears throat> what we want to do is, you know, and I won't get into uh, what the future might hold on that front as far as visitation overall in the park right now, but uh, we do want to have, um, you know, whether it's 3,000 cars a day or 2,000 cars a day or whatever the number is, uh, a safe uh, road for vehicles to come in. And, and the, the number, like I said, Old Gardner Road is super narrow, super steep, super curvy. And we still had 3000 cars a day coming in last year. So the width of the roads has no, no bearing on that. Um, so we wanna just make sure we do this right. We've got the right road design built to modern day standards. It's safe and, then, and considers all the factors that I talked about earlier. All right, thanks, Cam. And that looks like it, that's it for our questions today. Um, if you could advance to the next slide, Cam. Let me get a couple forward here for you. Okay. I'd like to you want, some you want this one? Uh, let's see here. Yes. Oh, no, actually, next one, please. Perfect. Um, we'd like to uh, invite you to submit your formal comments on the project. There are a few ways to do this. First, there's the National Park Service Planning, Environment, and Public Comment, or the Pepsi website, and this is the preferred method. The link to the Pepsi website is provided in this slide and will be pasted in the chat box. It's been pasted throughout the meeting. You may also hand deliver your comments to the park headquarters in Mammoth Hot Springs, Wyoming, or you can also mail it to the park at the Yellowstone Center for Resources. Uh, please note that your comments must be received by March 12, 2024 to be considered. Um, please also note that the presentation that was given tonight will be available on the Pepsi website as well. So now I'm gonna turn it back over to Cam to close out the meeting. Okay, um, we've got two more of these. So if you got on, I know some people got on late. You want to catch another one? We, we've scheduled two more. Um, 
the dates and we'll get these out March 1st, which is a Friday at 10 a.m. And Wednesday, March 6th at 3.30 p.m. So those are those are two two more of these. This will it'll be generally the same. So if you didn't catch all this, feel free to jump onto one of those. You can also watch the YouTube video that's on already from Tuesday's presentation. And or if you think of something that you didn't didn't say that you're curious about now that you've you've seen the alternatives and you got you'll have some time to think about it. Feel free to jump back on and and ask any more questions that you have. Um, yeah, you know, we've got some time. So this is just the pre-scoping preliminary conversations around these. Uh, like I said in the beginning, there's not a, I wish there was like a, a perfect alternative that uh, was obviously the best that doesn't, that doesn't exist. And so uh, your feedback is going to help us considerably in, in, in making sure we make the right decision here. So thanks for joining tonight and uh, Nicole and the team. Thanks uh, to everybody for uh, helping out. Appreciate it. Good night.